Lord be with you. Let us pray, Almighty God. We remember before you today your servant Flora. And we pray that having opened to her the gates of large life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service. That with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the ministry of the Word. A reading from the word of the Lord found in Isaiah chapter 55 verses 1 to 9. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Hearken diligently to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in fatness. Incline your ear, and come to me here, that your soul may live, and I will make you an everlasting covenant. My steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call nations that you know not, and nations that knew you not shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have mercy on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 100, read by his father, our chaste brother-in-law. Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name, for the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be God. Reading from the Word of God, written in Romans chapter 8, verses 25 to 39. But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the heart of men knows what is the mind of the Spirit because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that in every good work, 
In, in everything, God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might, he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And he will also, and he, he, will he not also give all things with him? Who, who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is it to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised from the dead. Who is at the right hand of the Father. Who intercedes for us. Who shall separate? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we, all, we, we, were, we were being killed all the day long. We, were, we are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks to God. from CPWI, number 690-690, Jerusalem, the
with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John the 14th chapter beginning at the first verse. Glory be to Christ our Savior. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise Christ our Lord. Sing the book should be still and open and I'm God. be seated. <laughs> this morning as we have gathered on this very sad occasion as we come to celebrate the life and witness of one Flora May Hanna, I take this opportunity to extend condolences on behalf of our diocesan bishop, the Right Reverend Leish Boyd and his wife Joanne and their family, who is a, he himself a son of Chippenham and is very well acquainted and also as a son of St. Agnes, is very much acquainted and knows our dearly departed sister. We extend condolences from our diocesan family, from the parish, vestry, and all of our people and all of our ministries here at Holy Spirit where Ms. Hannah spent the greater part of her life in worship to God. I also bring apologies and condolences on behalf of the priests who served here as former rectors in the persons of Canon Peter Scott, 
Father James Moultrie, Father Harry Ward, on behalf of Father Enrique McCartney, who once served as the associate here, and we have with us in our sanctuary Father Stephen Davies, who is also a son of the family. And I do so on behalf of my family and myself. To the entire Hannah family, the Coakley family, and all those who would have become her family through her caring spirit. I know my time with her was short for over the past two years. But she was a, a special woman. And within this context, I can truly say that there are two women, or were two women, in this church who made an indelible mark upon my life within the first two Sundays of my arrival. One being that of Florence Barbara Jane Albury, who would ensure that she told me her name every Sunday, that I would remember it. And the second was that of Ma Flo, as she was affectionately called. The first Sunday I walked into Holy Spirit, she called me over and she made it her business to introduce herself to me. The second Sunday when I walked in church, she called me back to her again. And sitting right there in the pew as you come mark into the aisle, she looked up at me and she said, Father, look into my eyes. And I looked into her eyes, she said, tell me what you see. And I said, well, what am I supposed to see? She said, love, darling, love. <laughs> and that became our greeting every Sunday and every Wednesday when we met one another. But what was exceptional about her, and I believe that in reflection, she prepared me for this time. Because she made it her business, not necessarily to know me, but for me to know her. For the past two years, we sat at table every Wednesday after midday mass. She would make me sit with her. And upon my arrival, she would come to my office and sit down and have lengthy talks with me, guiding me and directing me, and in many instances, telling me what needed to happen in this church, according to her. And then one day she said to me while sitting in my office, Father, you have a, I have already been to your office. Now I need you to come to mine. And she invited me to her home and where she went step by step from the front door and took me through the history of her life, picture by picture, room by room. And we had many a discussions on her bedside, talking about her life and her family. And one of the things that I learned about her very quickly through her storytelling and also through her example and her life living was that she was a woman of faith. A woman who trusted immensely in God at every step of her journey of life. And she left that example and her legacy with her children. And so she was special, I believe, to all those she came into contact with. And today we celebrate her life and the wonderful legacy she has left behind for us. I want to share with you some words from the Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter, and the sixth verse. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. May I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. This declaration made by Jesus in John chapter 14 comes to us as a direct challenge. A challenge to give a response of faith. Faith in that we trust what he has told to us. A trust in that he says who he is and he is that in fact. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. And unless you believe in me, unless you live in me, there is no life outside of this. This causes us or should compel us to ask ourselves the question, what is faith? 
In its basic definition, faith is a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. When we bring that into context of the church, faith is a strong belief in the doctrines of a religion based on spiritual convictions rather than physical proof itself. And so for our dear sister, Ma Flo and ourselves, faith for those of us who call ourselves Christians, who profess Christ, is a statement of belief in Jesus Christ as not only the Son of God, but as our Savior and our Redeemer, which is exemplified not only in our statement of faith, but must be translated into action and by the way we live from day to day. Simply put, faith is humanity's mental assent to the divinely revealed truth. And this divinely revealed truth is accepted not simply based on an emotional response, but a rational acceptance to a voluntary assent and submission to the absolute power and authority of our God. Faith at its core is deeply rooted in the expectation of good things to be the outcome of life. It goes even beyond hope, which while of hope live, while hope may live, live in our minds, faith is steeped in our hearts and our spirit. We cannot explain it adequately with words or by reason or by logic. It defies the very nature of logic or nor can it be understood through a simple statement. But rather faith is something that goes beyond what we can see. And while life can be hard at the best of times, faith is the knowledge that deep down inside, no matter how difficult, no matter how trying things may become, that there is a power at work among us that is greater than any situation or cause in life. And I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that our sister believed this totally throughout her life. That no matter how grim life situations were, how difficult the task at hand, she believed that her God was strong enough to see her through. That God would give her the strength and the know-how to conquer any situation that she faced. And therefore, she lived life with courage and with a particular boldness that was unmatched. One of the things I loved about her was that you didn't have to guess what she was, was thinking. If something was on her mind and she had something to tell you, you better believe she was gonna let you know. I learned that very quickly about her. In one of the, the first vestry meetings, someone that I chaired, someone said something and or I thought she was asleep. And, and she had a particular way of fooling it in believing that she was sleeping because her head would be down and her eyes would be closed. And the minute something was said that she did not agree with, I'd see her eyes open and she'd look over her glasses. And from that very first meeting from then, I always kept my eyes on her to know when in her mind someone was going contrary to what she believed ought to happen because why you thought she was not aware of what was happening in her senior years in a vestry meeting, while she was resting her eyes, her mind and her ears were vividly at work. Yes, she was one who allowed faith to push her to be active even when her physical body was being pushed beyond the limits of itself. Her spirit was resilient and her faith in God and the courage that he gave her kept her going even to the very end. In our last conversation, even though we had already known all these restrictions, she said to me, Father, I can't wait to get back to church. And I said, I said, well, Miss Hannah, I don't know. You know, they say, folks, your age should stay home. And she looked at me, she said, well, she know her and Dawn gonna have a little thing with this, Dawn go and keep her home, but she won't come to church. Nothing. She was not prepared to allow anything to separate her from the love of God in Christ Jesus, even in the midst of worship. Yes, faith demands a personal and a conscious relationship of the reality of God through Jesus Christ in one's life. Flora Mayhana had that personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
Faith for her gave her power. It told her that God would answer and supply all of her needs. It told her that what she conquered in life and encountered in life would only make her stronger. Faith helped her to define her purpose in life. And faith for her triumphed every stress and every anxiety and every fear. Some of us, we allow fears and all of our anxieties to get the best of us. But she was one through her faith who wholeheartedly believed, why worry when you could pray? Why worry when you can trust in God? Yes, she was not only a woman of faith, but Flora May Hanna was faithful throughout her life. Her faith compelled her to be faithful. And I want to share a couple of things with you before I take my seat quickly, how she was faithful. First and foremost, she was faithful to God. Miss Hannah served God her entire life. As you would read in her story and as she would have told and many of us would have been witness to. She was one who led her younger siblings to and from church. In her years when she became a nurse in the far-flung islands of the southern Bahamas where she served in the most rigid of conditions. She was one along with her husband who helped to keep the church doors open down in the southern Bahamas. And even upon her return to New Providence, she immersed herself in the life and work of this church and on a diocesan level. She served as ACW president, she served at diocesan synod, and she exemplified a, a spirit and a consciousness of work of duty to God and to his church, which she exemplified through her labor. And this is an example that can never be ignored. She was faithful to God, even in her most senior years. You'll see Miss Hannah come in here with her cane. And then she had her little walkers that had wheels, and she used to say, Father, you see my new car? The first time she told me about it on the phone, I, I thought Dawn and Claude then bought her new car for true. And when she showed up the church, she come with this pretty new walker with wheels that had brakes and everything on it. And she showed me how it had a nice little platform to place her bike. Nothing. She was faithful to God even in the midst of all of her discomfort and pain. And one Sunday I said, I said, Miss Hannah, why are you out this morning? She said, Father, one of my gals could take care of me, you know. Either Warney or, or Lisa, one of them could make sure I straight here in church. And one of her proudest moments that I can recall was when Dawn joined the altar. I could remember that Sunday she was sitting in here glowing and just filled with joy to, to have her daughter join her in worship. But not just sitting next to her, but serving around God's holy altar. A place that was sacred and holy to her. A place that brought her peace and comfort to know and to see that her, not only her children, but her grandchildren were present and actively involved in the life of her church where she had raised them. And so I know she was at peace with herself and with God, her creator, because her purpose in life, not only as a servant of God, but as a mother, had been fulfilled. When she spoke of her son, Gary, she would say, Father, you know, I, I got a son who is a minister too, you know. He down, and she would always speak with joy. You could hear the excitement in her voice. The way she spoke about all of her children. She was faithful to God in the execution of her duties. Yes, not only as a believer, but as a mother. She was faithful in the execution of her duties as a wife, even though her husband predeceased her. She shared so many stories of her life with her husband and the joy they shared. And I would often say to Miss Anna, oh, I wish I had met you when I first got married. She firmly believed in a woman's place in the home no matter what career path you chose in life. No matter how much work you had to do, she believed wholeheartedly in what a woman should be as a wife and a mother. And she was not afraid to tell other women that. 
and not even knowing my wife whenever she called she would ask to speak to my wife and I used to love the hand the phone the heart because the first thing she would ask she say you taking care of my boy and then she would start to give her advice now listen the next time I talk to you, I, I want to get a report and I got to know if I can give you an A or you can get a B. And she used to tell us, say, now you go in the room and fix yourself. I used to be like, Lord, Miss Hannah, I love you here. Yeah? Where you just come from? But she was a, a unique counselor. She was one who sought every opportunity to give guidance and counsel to those who came into her life. And she did not carry the wealth of knowledge that she gained through life with her in the grave. Far too many of us take with us all that we have learned and we have gained in life and we carry it to the grave. But she passed on the life lessons to her children and grandchildren. And that's why you see them in church every Sunday. Brian and Freeport and the boys on the altar. I remember them from when I was a young fella at Christ the King in Freeport. Therese and Melissa, those very much actively involved in church right here. It is a testimony of her faithfulness to God's call on her as a woman, a wife, and a mother. In her church life. She sought the opportunity to involve herself in all organizations and to bear witness through her life living. She sought to bear witness through her life in her job, in her calling as a nurse. And she is known far and wide through this country. And she used this calling to care for so many unbeknowing to many of us. I've heard countless stories of how she spent time even in her early retirement going to the home of the sick from this church and in this community and rendering care to them at home while they were sick and confined. And so she has left us a wonderful example of what it means to be a woman of God, to be a mother, a grandmother, to be a friend, to be a companion on this earthly pilgrimage. And so today as we have come to give thanks to Almighty God for her life and her witness. I hope and pray that the example of Flora Mayhana, her example of faith personified in life, that each of us will seek to allow that to take hold and root in our lives. And we will be inspired by her legacy to allow faith to live and to grow in us and to compel us to become active, to take our faith now and to become actively involved in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because that's what she did. Not only in her speech, but by her example. She knew him as the way, the truth, and the life. I hope and pray that each of us will follow her example and come to know Christ in a personal way. So that when we would have run our course on earth, we too may hear those faithful words. Well done, thou good and faithful servant. May this be your blessing and mine in his name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
for having the sessions. For our sister and Flora, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am resurrection and I am life. Lord, you console Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us as we mourn for our Aunt Flora and dry the tears from those who weep. Yes, Lord. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. Hear us, Lord. You raise the dead to life. Raise our sister and Flora to eternal life. Hear us, Lord. You promised paradise to the thief who repented. Bring our sister and Flora to the joys of heaven. Hear us, Lord. Our sister and Flora was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all the saints. Yes, Lord. And Flora was nourished with your body and blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom. Yes, Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of our sister and Flora. Let our faith be our consolation and eternal life our hope. Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Flora, who has been the one by the Lord and Spirit and Holy Baptism. From her death, we recall to us for victory over death, and give occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father. Give us, we pray, the faith before the way of men and women, and then we live and reign with the Father and Holy Spirit to the ages of the and if we say that we have no sin and deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And brothers and sisters in Christ, let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in the flow of the word and the and in what we have left and done. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, say, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in the midst of that, to the glory of the name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, Father, and the for all your sins. Confirm the strength of you in all of us, and keep your life in turn. Through Jesus Christ, our reward. Amen. Of the journey from the CPWI handbook number 290 290 on the day of Pentecost.
Lord. We have this bread and wine to offer the fruit of the earth for the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. Oh, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Lord.
Lord be with you. Also with you. Let us pray the post in the prayer on page 15 of our service for the Lord's Prayer. Almighty God, we thank you that in your great love you have fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, and has given us a foretaste of your heavenly life. Grant that the sacrament may be to us a comfort and affliction, and a pledge of our inheritance, in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor cry, for the fullness of joy and the Lord was his name, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. And then before we have our next year, I will pause for just a moment to also uh, to recognize another of the clergy, two of them in person of uh, Dr. Roland Hampton, uh, who is very near and dear to our system of flow, and also to Father Sharp Stenkers, who is our organist for today. Uh, we also have the first of our Janice Sebastian Campbell, another war priests who are sons um, in the faith of our dear dear father sister. And we thank all of our clergy for coming and showing love as we celebrate in this home in the service the mass of resurrection for our dear sister Florida. Okay. Paul Spader here, I vow to lead my country. Because of that. 
and uh, she became very close to my family, my parents, and my mom in particular because they worked together as yellow birds. A few weeks ago, I was at the graveside for burial of Stella Thompson, another one of those yellow birds. But Thelma and Flora were two angels that I knew always. Always prayed for me. And this pandemic period has shown me just who are the people who love and care for their peace. Two angels, God, I don't know who prayed for me now.
Christ has risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and giving life to those in the tomb.
Okay. 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 Yeah. I see everything looks okay. Okay, thanks, yeah. man. All right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Lord be with you. And also with you. Everyone the Father gives to me will come to me. I will never turn away anyone who believes in me. He who raised Jesus Christ from the dead will also give new life to our mortal bodies through the indwelling spirit. My heart therefore is glad and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. You will show me the path of life, and in your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures evermore. I heard a voice saying, write this, happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth, says the Spirit, they may rest from their labors, for they take with them the record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. Like a flower, he blossoms and then withers. And like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by our sins? Lord, God, holy and mighty, holy, immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. And in your mercy hear our prayer. Forgive us of our sins. 
and at our last hour let us not fall from you. Ensure and certain hope of the resurrection of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God our sister Flora May, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. And we beseech in you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love, to die in your favor, that when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our sister Flora May and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let's pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and bliss, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good examples of all your servants, who, having finished their course in faith, now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect fulfillment and bliss in your eternal and everlasting glory. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, to all who are bereaved, the spirit of faith and courage, they may have strength to meet the days to come with steadfastness and patience, not sorrowing as those without hope, but in thankful remembrance of your great goodness and in the joyful expectation of eternal life to those they love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Rest eternal grant unto her, O Lord. May she and all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless her. The Lord make his face shine upon her and be gracious her. The Lord lift up his countenance upon her and grant her eternal Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We sing the hymn ten thousand times, ten thousand.
Bring me thy great salvation, thou that was in us Fill up the role of thine elect, and take thy power and will. Eyes of nation, thine exiles long for war. Show in the heavens thy promise, sign, thou prince and Savior Great them right on one stroke. Part along, know it's all about it. Part along, understand why. Share up my family and friends. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it one day. All by and by. Special thanks to Father Bo, Father Davies, other soldiers, gospels, and few my many friends. Members of this parade family, great for the knowledge. Of oh, also find this words of comfort. Express to them during this time of three months. Cards, letters, press was most quickly sent it. And you all should be thanking the personal manner at a later date. To those who are in bereavement at this time, be the man's man, staff of Bethel, but as much distance and crematorium. If you'd like to leave these words of encouragement, of encouragement with you, a heart of gold starts beating. Two smiling eyes are dressed. Our God has spoken to our hearts to prove to us, for he only takes his very best. And though our smiles are gone forever, and a hand you cannot touch, but still you love those precious memories of her that you love so much. Each day you see a picture, you can only see him to smile and say, family and friends don't cry for me, for I'm only sleeping. We'll meet again some glorious day. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding stay in your heart and this is your time of three months. But this is our prayers for you, in Jesus' name. And all God people say, Amen. Amen. On page number 10 of our booklets, sing the hymn Jerusalem the Lord. Jerusalem the Lord, with milk and honey blessed, feeding thy contemplation, sing heart and voice to I know not who I am. Sweet 
and blessed country, the home of God's elect. Oh, sweet and blessed country, that eager hearts expect. She's you in mercy, bring us to, to the dead land of rest. Who art with God the Father and Spirit ever bless? The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the souls of the faithful depart. Rest in peace. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 
Mm-hmm. 